we're done a mic. That's it. We're here to help you um, with anything, to be honest. Anything that we can help you with. Come up with anything. What do you want to help with? Big arms, yeah. Them, that one there. Oh, it's just a, Big arms, yeah. yeah. No. What do you want to help with? Fitness business, probably. Fitness. Probably what, we, uh, what we're known yeah. for. Well, yeah. it doesn't count if there's two of you, though. It doesn't count if there's two of you. I forgot about that. No. Did Pro- forget about that. Procter and Gamble? No. Nah, don't be tough, mate. There's yeah. two of them. doesn't count. Who, who Smashy else? and Nicey. Yeah. Doesn't work. Yeah. Barry and Paul. Can't. Doesn't work. No. Doesn't work. Can't. Ant and Deck. Doesn't. Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Doesn't work. No. Oh, I didn't, I didn't create one of the best comedies of all time. It's, it's a two, so it doesn't count if there's two of you. It has doesn't to be just one. Count. Even if you employ people, it's still just one, apparently. Yeah. Well, that's a little dig there to start off. Is it? Anyway, what are, we, uh, what? what are we talking about? Uh, I know what we're talking about. I know what we're talking about. Um, as an online coach, you shouldn't post body transformations because it's bad. Yeah, apparently. And that is bad. <laughs> yeah, for your business, it'll be bad, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a new one. Um, I've not heard of. I hadn't genuinely hadn't heard recently. of it. Um, well, no, obviously, for certain niches, I think is is valid, hundred percent valid. Um, so, so but the, it's a very very small the, subsection. The, the of point, the point, the point is, is that um, there's uh, maybe a group of people, or uh, business mentors, or or whatever. There's, there's there's a group of people at the moment that are saying that posting transformation photos are bad. Just a preface, yeah. Because you'd gone it, you'd gone into it, you'd gone into it without explaining what's been happening. It's what I been always happening. do. I always go without an explanation. Yeah, you you, you just started to you just started to go, just right. yeah, yeah. So just a preface. Yeah, transformation photos apparently are bad. Yeah, there you go. Um, for 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 some reason, like I said, and and I look, I know the reason for that is the whole comparison, right? I think it's the whole it makes people feel bad potentially that kind of thing, right? And I agree that for one type of demographic, very small demographic of people who maybe have issues with their relationship with food or their body image. Um, that's not the goal of coaching with them, with, with a coach who deals with that sort of stuff, blah, 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 which is a very small subsection of the fitness industry, which I would encourage them to be like, well, again, niche specific, you should post social proof that is relevant to your niche. Do you know what I, uh, one easy question that would foil the whole argument would be, why from a coach that works with bodybuilders? Well, still shouldn't do it though. Well, so. there you go. Would would they, would they say, well, you shouldn't? Well, how would I, how would I get yeah. any business then? Because bodybuilding is an aesthetic sport. Yeah. So so then if that passes and you're okay, well, for them, for them that's okay. Okay, so then you realize then for a niche that transformation photos are going to be needed then for a niche mm. so then you also recognize then for the niche that you're talking to then they might not be needed to might not be needed so then there's probably also a niche there that maybe not stop stepping on stage but wanted to do something else that was an aesthetic goal yeah. like so would the transformation photo be needed then yeah and you just kind of foil that whole argument with with just an explanation of why you would be using a transformation photo in terms of a particular niche yeah, and I think it kind of like, even going back even further than that, is that I think it, it's okay to want to have a physique goal that means you look better with less clothes on. Like, I, like when did that become a, a reason to like... Negative. Yeah, when did it become a negative? Like well, for the argument go, is it makes people feel bad and makes people feel like they should well, need to change to feel well, happy. Well, no, because those people are coming to me already feeling bad. Mm-hmm. Like... I'm just showing them that I can help them get out of that place. I can make them feel better and stuff like that. Like, That's what the argument is. The right? argument, I suppose, is as well, the media and everything else is doing that as well, right? So you're adding to it and all that sort of shit, right? But, but the fact is that some people do want to lose weight so they feel better without clothes. And healthier and yeah. more confident and reduce risk of, you know, um, um, death <laughs> in cases. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's not all bad. I just, I just find it um, uh, like an like an odd attack from people in the fitness industry, because I'm like, well, you're the one people you you can help people do that. You can help people feel better, look better, all those sorts of things. And I I understand the I understand the argument, I understand where it's coming from. But my my argument to this, and the reason that we're going to make a video about this, is because I know as a coach that I'm also in a position to be able to help that person mentally improve. Mm-hmm as well as physically. Like there are coaches out there who, you know, will just run people into the ground and get them to look better mm-hmm. and post before and after and give them a meal plan that's crap and leave them with a really poor relationship with food and all that sort of stuff. We've heard stories about that. We know that exists and happens. But I know that all the good coaches out there will actually get that person to 
maybe even value their body less from that point of view, but they will also help them through that coaching journey to look at things like getting stronger, um, being healthier and focus on those markers of, again, improving cardiovascular endurance, whatever it might be. They'll, they'll bring them through that journey where they go, well, look, it's not just about how you look. We've also seen all these other improvements as well because I'm a good coach and I can help you through that. And I find it odd that as a coach, if you have that ability, you wouldn't show it off. The, the, the problem is, is that it's black and white again, like everything that ever arises with the fitness industry, when in reality it's shades of grey. Mm. It's that black and white thinking of, if you don't look after somebody's body image and relationship with food, then you are running them into the ground and causing an eating disorder. It's almost like it's one or the other with the mm. fitness industry, but it's not. There's the middle ground, as there always is. You can still help somebody get in better shape or what would be conceived as, usually or perceived as, better shape or less weight let's just say um or more toned or however you want to frame it whilst getting healthier whilst getting stronger whilst lowering you know health risks and still improve their relationship with food and relationship with their, their body we've done it numerous 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 times it's mm. literally the whole fucking task but it's this it's this black and white thinking it's this fuzzy thinking david um it's this black and white thinking of like if it's not no transformations, airy fairy, mindful eating. It's oh, it's scary, disordered eating, meal plan, ran into the ground, loss of menstrual cycle, poor body image, rebounding. It's not that at all. Mm. Like it's not that at all. Um, and this came up. I think Dan's got a client, you've got a client, and I've got a client who've both come from other mentorships. Um, mine in particular said he felt out of place and demonized slightly for posting transformation photos and he was made to feel like he couldn't post them mm. yet he wanted to post them because he wanted to show off the the great results that his clients had worked hard to achieve because yeah. they'd come in for that reason in the first place um and he felt like he was being demonized by this holier than thou attitude of get they got in a guest who said you can't do this with transformations it makes people feel bad and he's sat, sat there thinking but I want to post my transformation photos because it's like, you know, my social proof and people want that. Lots of people want that. Um, and it's almost like going, I use this kitchen fitter analogy a lot with, mm. with um, in regards to transformation photos. It's almost like going, oh, you can't post the before and after of a kitchen because it'll make people feel bad who, who haven't got a new kitchen. What? <laughs> like, yeah. no, it won't. But for those looking for a new kitchen... Yeah. It would help them contextualize and visualize what could what mm. what what good work that this company does. It's like it's just this woke. Be careful not to upset those feelings. Well, if they don't have anything, well, you you can't you can't save money then. Don't save money because mm. for people with no savings, you'll make them feel bad for not having any savings. Yeah. Where does it where does it end? Where do you draw a line? Yeah. The thing that I, the, the thing that I took from it that I, I got quite sort of wound up about annoyed about is is like you say it is the bit of the holier than our attitude but it's more so the fact that unfortunately I, I wish I wish that as online coaches we had much more influence in the world than we do but we but we don't is that you're not going to change the way the world is the media the the, the, or the worldwide media and all this sort of stuff right so you're again what someone views on your Instagram page is a microscopic part of their life in terms of what they see in in, in everyday life. Um, and let's assume that they follow you and another nine coaches, right? Because they're not just going to follow one online coach. They're probably going to follow a few, right? And you take this attitude of, I'm not going to post transformation first because it makes people feel bad, right? And those other nine coaches that this person follows are all shit coaches who don't give a shit about someone's mental health, don't know anything about the effects that, you know, you know strict dieting can have on someone's body image, all this sort of stuff, right? And you don't post transformation photos, but the other nine do, Right? And this person really likes you, but they go, oh yeah, but I don't know if they get results and I don't really, I want to lose weight, I want to look good, I want to get bigger arms, a smaller waist. And they go to one of those other nine coaches that runs them into the ground and makes them feel shit. That's your fault. In my opinion, that is that coach's fault because you didn't provide the alternative because we know that those people are looking for that end result and we are actually better than most coaches out there. Most you watching will be. Don't worry about it. Hats off to you. Um, and by not putting that out there, you are making it more likely that person's going to go to someone who isn't as good a coach as you and who is just going to focus solely on the transformation. Mm -hmm. That's my bugbear with it, is it's like you're taking this hole in our attitude, but you're actually making it harder for these people to seek you out and find you and get your help. 
um, because of that reason. And, and no matter how much you shout at people that it's not about how you look, it's about how you feel or whatever, no matter how much content you put out, no matter how much you say it, in that frame of mind, that person will not hear you, mm-hmm. in my opinion. They, they almost need to go through the process to believe it. Mm-hmm. How many times we had, a, we, had, we had clients come through and go, oh my God, like I, I just never realized how straightforward this could be. Mm-hmm. I never realized how I could eat the foods that I love and, and still lose weight. They, you know, when people say that on content, I'm like, people don't believe you. People mm-hmm. don't believe you because they've done that. And that's what mm-hmm. they've been doing. They need to be told that you can't eat as many of those foods mm-hmm. to lose weight. And then once they get in, then you can show them actually, yeah, look, you can eat a little bit more of them. And actually it's not the end of the world. Um, and, and it's that whole thing of like we talk about sometimes, unfortunately, in this, in this industry we're in, you have to sell people what they want and give them what they need. And if you're a good coach with good ethics, you can do that. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. It's what people do effectively all the time in, in fat loss. Um, and, and I think as long as you're highlighting those other things that can crop up and you're dealing with them on a weekly basis in your coaching, you're fine. You're, you're doing your duty of care to people. Um, that's my worry with it is you've got these coaches out there who A, aren't going to be building a better business because of it because they're not going to get them that many clients through the door. But then the clients that they may have got through the door are going to other people who don't know how to coach them properly. Mm-hmm. And that, whose fault is that? The thing, the thing is, is that it's just, once again, it's just, um, it's blanket advice across a whole industry that gets affected by it. But it, 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 there's just no, I, I can't understand how people in this industry cannot understand the concept of, of niches. I, right. I, I, I can't understand that. Like it's when we used to joke. So we again, if you've not watched any of the old stuff, highly recommend. Go watch it. it. Definitely go watch, go it. watch it. You're already on the channel, so you've Might got YouTube well. up. Loads better than you this. Know. Well. Loads better. Than, fucking hell, <laughs> um, this is shit. Um, <laughs> but we used to we used to make fun of bodybuilders. Now that wasn't because we don't like bodybuilders or we didn't appreciate you know what what bodybuilders do or whatever. Or it, it's not particular. It's not even particularly because we cared. Uh, whether they wore mm. vibrams or not it, it doesn't matter it doesn't affect our life it's because the reason why we made, put out the content that we did is because when we were making if i made content about um how vibrams look stupid in the gym uh, you get people who don't understand that are people from slimming world people who train at pure gyms who do zumba classes they wouldn't even get the, they mm. wouldn't even get the gist of what i was saying so it, it's an automatic filter and then you're down to you're literally down to the two different types of people that are left that even understand that concept and it's the people that do do it and the people that don't do it and have got the same values as me that it looks stupid those those are the ones those are the ones that will come to me that, that those ones that's that's the power of niche and then but but bodybuilders won't understand that and they would think that it was just a dig at them no, it's not a di- it's not a dig i don't care it's me knowing what my niche is thinking yeah. and the, the sense of humor and the, uh, it looks a bit stupid when a coach has a camera crew following around the gym, like who do they think they are type thing. Like it's me knowing that niche. Again, you don't get that in a pure gym or in a pump class or whatever. You don't, you don't get that. So I'm automatically filtering people out and it's the same thing. So like business mentors, unfortunately, should be giving out bespoke advice to their coach clients because no business is the same and no business is niche target market is the same so for example if i have a coach who works with ex slimming world women then they're not going to be paying a thousand pounds up front for coaching but yet business mentors are putting them in this bracket of going you need to charge a thousand pounds three months for coaching well it doesn't suit their niche and it's the same thing as going don't post transformation photos yeah okay if you're a, a a coach who works exclusively with people with disordered eating or disordered body image or um any kind of um any kind of history of, of disordered eating or anything like that maybe wanting to to move away from the com- you know, i guess post competitive um element i guess like like an amelia or somebody like that if that's what your niche is then yeah correct you shouldn't be posting and we can sit here and say that you shouldn't be posting and we have and we have the beauty of balance of knowing that there's shades of grey and go, yeah, for you, that makes sense. For you to say that, that makes sense because you're audience. But it's just such a blanket of well, nobody should be posting. Well, that's not that's not right. You shouldn't be saying that to everybody because it should be done for certain people, just like certain people probably could charge a thousand pounds for three months up front mm. if you're targeting busy professionals. Like for for certain people, that might be right. But but to just blindly, blanketly say Oh, you shouldn't post transformations because it makes people feel bad. Well, 
to the right. But I know people that have been inspired by seeing a before and after photo. Who they say, oh, I saw that guy and he lost all Tons. that weight. And he was like, and I, still, I was like, I was like, right, I can do it then. Tons. Yeah. Tons. Well, look at the amount of clients we've had that we've helped. They've exclusively come to coach him mm-hmm. because of an element of the, of what we show of, of social proof is of, of the transformation photos. Yeah. And it's the thing that I I just find so, it's just such a strange thing to, to be talking about because all of the also, people, right, that we've helped over the years, help people get pregnant, help people um, lose ridiculous amounts of weight, change their life for the rest of their life, right? Mm. They may not have come into coaching had they have not seen exactly. somebody that they resonated with on our page. Exactly that. And that's the thing is they have to see themselves in that photo, much to the point where I had a client who does um, help like ex Slimming Worlders and that kind of thing. And we noticed something with her transformations that we, we picked up on from, again, looking at her content and analyzing the data <laughs> is that the, the transformations that are best for her were ones that they were in, in clothes. So she had a before photo where they didn't feel comfortable, didn't feel confident, and then they were in like a dress on a night out. And those they went they went like wildfire. And I was like, well, yeah, it makes complete sense. Because if I go to Slim World, I don't want to necessarily have a picture of myself in my underwear on, on Instagram. I want to be feeling great in my dress when I go to a Christmas party or whatever. So anyone who's Slim World or whatever, that's your niche. That's something you, you should think about um, is targeting that type of person. But the other point that I wanted to make is that as good coaches as well, you have a support network around you of people who, if you are smart enough, and you, you know, I'm sure you will be, to see the red flags in someone's relationship with food, their body, all this sort of stuff. I know exactly who to refer that person to, who's better than me at that. I've got that, that connection to go, right, here's the coach for you. Like, you need to go speak to them. I've done it before, several clients who've done that. And it's, it, but it's so rare that that happens. That just shows you, well, no, it's not causing then body image issues. Because if it, if it was, then over 50% of our clients coming to us would have been in a bad position mm-hmm. six months in. But they're not. Mm-hmm. So th- that, that worries me then because that makes me think then that these coaches that they're telling this to, maybe they are seeing this regularly. Mm-hmm. Maybe they do need to upskill their coaching. Maybe they, maybe they are doing some harm to people because why would you need to give that advice to someone? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't need to give that advice to any of the coaches I work with because I know they're good enough to coach someone so they, that wouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. So that's the other thing you need to worry about is like, if that's what they're saying, is that because they're not able to provide good enough quality coaching? Mm-hmm. There you go. Who knows? It's a, it's a whole thing, isn't it? Where we've got evidence of th- over, over a thousand, well, we've had fucking 1,200 blitz, so thousands. We can literally say thousands of people. And if that was the case, there would be some evidence now that, okay, yeah, maybe maybe there's some some merit in that. But there isn't. And it's a whole, it, it, it's pretty much like when people said you can't lose weight eating carbs and the people that were eating carbs losing weight went, well, I'm I doing it then? Type yeah. thing. It's, it's like that. Uh, well, you the, can't post transformation photos because it, it does this. Well, how are we doing it then? The problem that I feel with it is that it, the problem with, with that is that their argument, they only need one person to say, oh, but I was the one that it mm-hmm. affected out of a thousand, do you know? Mm-hmm. And out of a thousand, you're going to get a percentage you are no, you know it's not it's not um it's not a foolproof system you're going to get people slip through the cracks or whatever and this is my other bugbear with it because it's, it's such a serious issue and, it, and it, it does affect people is that they only need 10 out of a thousand to be negatively affected potentially mm-hmm. to go oh, i told you so mm. and they again it's that holy than now well i told you so those 10 people then is it worth it then for the 990 that that did okay and it's like well well yeah Unfortunately, yeah. Like that's the way the world is with data. Like when you look at data stuff, it's like, well, you take medication, it's like, well, there's a ninety-nine point nine percent chance that you'll be fine. Well, people still take it, don't they? Do you know, it's that whole thing of you can't help kind of everyone, and that that's the problem I find with it in this industry is you only need an example of one person, and all of a sudden it's like throwing fuel on the fire, and people go, mm-hmm. well, told you so, told you so. Um, and my argument could be to that, well, even if they hadn't seen that photo, or they hadn't seen that, and they hadn't gone into that that program with the wanting to change the body image, they still would have ended up feeling shit or feeling crap if they lost a little bit mm-hmm. of weight and put it all back on again or whatever. And again, it's it's just such a minefield and, and I just feel like it's not, there's too many people talking about that side of it, not enough actually supporting the element of, you no, know, you can want to look better. Mm-hmm. Like transformation photos are okay. There's no one standing up for that side of the argument, it seems. There's no one standing up for, transformation photos are fine. It's actually okay to lose weight. Like if you can want to look better, you, you can, can want to grow muscle, better. you can want to lose body fat. Yeah. So <clears throat> if you're a coach that 
believes in that keep believing in it it's really easy to get swept up in this whole it makes you feel like you're the the bad guy like that's 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 what it is it, it is the holier than now oh well oh so you post transformation photos i don't believe in that because it makes people feel bad it almost makes you feel like you should be feeling bad for doing it D- don't it's 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 apples and oranges it's different things uh, yeah. and unfortunately and i think it's personal bias creeps in that bit yeah, of, of course well it happened to me okay yeah so you're one out of a hundred. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I would, um, if, if you're in a mentorship or you've been in a mentorship that said, oh, you can't post this or you can't do that. I heard, oh, you, sh- you shouldn't do rapid, you shouldn't do fat loss um, coaching, group coaching. Um, you shouldn't incentivize it with a prize. I, I saw that going around. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't. Um, you, you probably shouldn't. But when coached well, um, with really hands-on support, um, guidance uh, and the way that we've set it out, we we probably should be, yeah. So yeah. it's it's the same thing. It's just blanket. Like you said, it's blanket. It's that if if anything says everyone should be doing this, yeah. I, I would question it straight away. Yeah, exactly. Straight away. So there you go. There we go. Post that was useful. Post your transformation photos. Post people in the pants. Yeah, all over, all over Instagram. Mm. Yeah. Why not? That's it. Done. Liking it. Like, oh, shit. Oh, we've waited this long. Like it. No one's watching that. No. At the end. Share it. Off. They've already turned off. Post it to MySpace. Share it, Bebo. Put it on your uh, Snapchat and stuff, whatever it is. Everything. Blackberry Messenger. We'll BBM. put it anywhere, yeah. 